Hi, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Melting Pot, which, as you know, is a weekly episode. And it's a series of conversations with some very talented people who, in my opinion, are also change makers. Um, today, I'm in conversation with Sharon Loudon. I hope I've got the last name correctly pronounced. Uh, mm-hmm. Sharon, firstly, thank you for um, talking to me. I know you're in New York and it's 2 or is it 2 or 2.30 a.m. for you and Thank you for staying up um, <laughs> to, 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 to talk to me. I really, really appreciate that. Before we get into the conversation, I just want to do a very brief um, introduction since I've written it up, I may as well. <laughs> so um, Sharon is an artist um, and she's also an educator. Um, as an artist, her works have been, are actually not have been, are held currently in a lot of the public and private collections in the US. Um, she's also an editor of the Living and Sustaining a Creative Life series of books and an artistic director of the visual arts at, okay, this one you have to help me with. It's, it's okay. The, uh, it's the visual, uh, visual uh, arts uh, institution. Chautauqua. You oh, almost did it. Chautauqua. Okay. Chautauqua Institution. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thank you once again, Sharon. I'm really happy that we are able to have this conversation. Um, so, tell my listeners and me a little bit about yourself and have you. Um, have you, did you always aspire to be an artist? Um, how did that journey begin for you? Well, first of all, I just want to thank you very, very much for having me and thank you to your listeners and also people viewing this. Um, I'm very grateful to be in your company. Um, (laughs) this is, (laughs) well, I I feel much gratitude. This is a, a normal time for me to be up so I'm happy to be talking with you okay so I'm not going to feel guilty (laughs) no not at all you picked the right right time um gosh I really don't like talking about myself too much I like talking about other people um I love sharing space for other people um giving platforms for other people like in in my books as you were so kind to mention um and then uh with the Chautauqua Visual Arts at Chautauqua Institution, giving opportunities to um, to people from all over the world uh, in our residency program, which is multi generational, as well as classes, visiting artist programs, galleries, etc. Um, so where, where is this institution? It's in um, Western New York and Western, the New York state, and it's nearby Toronto, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. And it's this idyllic place on uh, Chautauqua Lake that's been in existence since 1874. Um, And the website there just for anybody to check out is art.chq.org. so anyway, I feel that uh, as far as asking the answering the question, if I've always been an artist, um, the answer would be yes. And I never made the decision to be an artist. It just was there. Um, and so I can't explain that. I, I guess it's just sort of natural from, from when, I, when I was young. Okay, and um, so then obviously you um, you you developed it, and then you decided um, to start. Did you go into like studying art professionally? Did you go into? Uh, you did that. I did. I I, I studied. Uh, well, I couldn't really go anywhere else because uh, I couldn't really do anything else. Very, I guess, very well or comfortably. Yeah. Uh, so I went to some fancy schools and but they taught me a lot and then um, part of my whole artistic practice is everything I do whether it's uh, consulting for creative capital or the Joe Mitchell Foundation or teaching at School of Visual Arts um, or Chautauqua or all these this patchwork um, 
and making work. Um, for, for me, it's all under one umbrella as I wear many hats. Many artists wear all different hats today. So um, what is the, is there any, uh, any specific um, kind of art that, you know, you, you like or you enjoy doing? What is the different mediums that you use um, as an artist? And, and is it something that, so, so essentially, do you like experimenting with different uh, kinds of art? I mean, and different sort of medium and different forms of art. Oh my gosh, you you are asking wonderful questions. Thank you. Um, you're a pro here. Um, uh, I think that, well, first of all, the media serves the idea for me. So it's, I'm not media centric. Um, I, I do have a love affair with a highly reflective aluminum that's very hard to find in the world. We source it out of Canada and um, it's uh, a beautiful material, um, but I've also been painting, doing film animation and drawing and just got into a lot of collaboration with uh, Harag Vatanian, who is um, an artist, also editor in chief of Hyperallergic, hyperallergic.com is that website. Um, and so I, right now I'm in the, I'm, I'm in this sort of lost valley, which is exciting, uncomfortable and um, welcoming um, in figuring out uh, where my language is taking me. Um, these big installations that I do are, are generally places for inclusivity, including people through the media, it's highly reflective. So people are autom automatically included in these installations that disrupt and complement and harmonize with existing architecture. And then the film is abstract film, which uh, is a nod and respect for abstract animation that's been going on since the 1920s. And then um, just the painting and drawing is, they're all connected, just like everything I do in my life is connected as an artist. And thank you for asking that question. No, no, that's interesting because I think, um, so you try and basically um, piece it all together, right? Um, the, the whole process, um, you connect it just so that, um, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't really know much about art, so this is why I'm probably sounding... Not at all. I at think the moment, but... it's great. It's yeah. great that you're asking these questions. I talk to a lot of people every day who don't know much about the visual arts, and I think that um, history is, it has, has formed where uh, the visual arts have been, uh, I think misunderstood, isolated. Um, I think a, a lot of artists uh, are viewed as being, or the profession as being romantic, uh, that maybe we're stuck in an attic with our ear cut off and that we're um, disturbing individuals that may seem to be eccentric. Um, but I feel I, that with technology, um, mm -hmm. And, and technology as also um, includes a lot of different forms of art, which you can then um, then um, add on to, to what you do. So, I, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I, I doubt if artists are, I think historically, yes, maybe artists were considered to be very, um, eccentric, as you said, uh, but I feel that now with all these different uh, mediums that are being uh, um, provided, um, it gives you, you're able to, I know the traditional way of expressing um, through your art is probably not um, as, as popular uh, with the younger generation as it used to be earlier. I. I'm guessing, I'm not sure if you have an opinion on that. 
I think that the integration of the visual arts in society could get much better. I think that museums are, are starting to realize that quite a bit and um, being able to open up not only exhibitions in white, or between white walls, if you will, but also in different kind of formats and the idea of a post exhibition world where artists can survive in different ways and share their work with technology as you're referencing, um, but also engagement. And, um, you know, artists have been uh, inventive in so many ways for many, many years. They've also started a lot of museums and a lot of organizations and we think out of the box. Um, but I, I, I do think also for a lot of artists, aside from public, from the public, artists sometimes, like even yesterday, I got an email from someone, I received an email from somebody who is attending college where I did a uh, information session yesterday about Chautauqua. And they wrote me and said, I realize now that I may not uh, receive gallery representation when I graduate. Well, my jaw almost dropped to the floor because um, those, I think gallery in big quotes representation is very, very different than it was, or maybe it's the same. And we actually don't know what, what it was. And today it's all different meaning depending on the, the gallery and the artist and how they function together as a, I think, as a, a partnership. Um, so I think there's a lot of mythology that's around the visual arts. And I welcome, and I'm grateful that you're having this podcast in order to bring artists forward. And that uh, even though I'm not wearing makeup, which I never really do, but my hair is washed and I have clean clothes on right now. <laughs> And it's 3 a.m. <laughs> so yeah. I'm all credit to you for looking so <laughs> and lovely even at 3 a.m. Oh, well, but, yeah, it's a and that charming smile. I mean, it's, I'd be very grumpy if someone, you know, if I had to do a, a, a conversation with someone at, at 3 a.m., um, I would try, but it wouldn't come naturally to me like it, like it is to you. So, so that's quite incredible. Um, right. so are there, uh, you know, obviously you interact with a lot of artists. Um, and are you seeing a certain trend in the way the artists are approaching? Is it sort of something that's very getting to be very commercial in terms of everyone's like, okay, I'm an artist and I'm going to, the, the price of my art will keep going up and it's it's going to be like um, people invest in art. So um, is, is it a trend? Because I know from probably 10 years ago that people would buy art um, mainly because they wanted it as an investment. Um, but is that something which you see a lot of or, or not really? It's interesting. I would never recommend anyone to buy work, artwork as an investment. Um, the reason being is that uh, it's so unpredictable. The, 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 um, the art as a luxury market is, I think, one of the very few, if not the only unregulated market, a luxury market uh, in the world. And I, I believe that it's so much better if someone thinks about art as uh, something that they can enjoy, windows yeah. of imagination, of pleasure. Yeah. And if anything, investing in the, in the artist um, and also um, for some, I think for some collectors, they love to get to know the artist and that just depends if that relationship if both, party, both parties are open to that. Um, I do know of some uh, 
people in the market who invest in art, but it's so unpredictable as to what is going to happen in, in an artist's career. Um, and I think the artists who are in it for the long term, such as myself, I'm not concerned about that as much as yeah. the longevity. I, I think that everyone has a different def definition of success as an artist. And for me, it's just A, being healthy, B, um, having the privilege of being able to make my work and live as an artist um, uh, as I have been. I mean, that is a tremendous gift where I think very, I think not as many artists have that opportunity, whereas um, they are, are not able to spend as much time on their work, perhaps. I also think that it's a, a myth that artists um, may not have, let's say, a job. And if they have a job, it doesn't mean to me, just because an artist has a, has a job somewhere doesn't mean that they're any less of an artist. So that kind of mythology of um, the artist alone is success by those sales, to me, that, that's actually not true. I mean, look at all the artists that have like Louise Bourgeois, for example, yeah. she, she'd been making her work for her entire life. And it was only until I think her sixties when her work was then uh, quote discovered. And so I, I feel that the timing of things that the market um, comes knocking doesn't have anything in a way to do with the life of the artist. Um, I also know that artists who are, uh, quote, successful by the deem by the marketplace also have their ups and downs. Yeah. As I, I have found that as quickly as an artist rises in a market, they could come down as quickly as they, they rose. And what, um, what could be the reasons for that? You know, I think longevity makes a big difference. I think that the marketplace is fairly conservative, honestly. And, um, and, and I think that there has to be something proven um, to a degree. Um, back to your initial question about trends. I, I, I think it's hard to gauge trends, but, but yesterday I sat on a admissions panel and I, I looked at a lot of artists work that are young and who are out there in the world. I think that there's a lot of identity-based work out there. Um, I think that uh, from a lot of different cultures that is expanding uh, or, you know, I think the art history, the art historical, the canon of art history um, needs to be severely decolonized and um, because it's been based on Western culture. And so now we're seeing a, 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 a I think a great mass of artists from different cultures that are coming together because the art world is so global. And quite frankly, there are so many different art worlds to, to concentrate on and not just the one that is, is, is run by these very large uh, substantial galleries that make an impression. Yeah. And so I guess as an as a young, like you mentioned earlier, that there was a student who um, who wrote to you, sent an email saying that, uh, you know, his or her, um, uh, he would not get represented by a gallery. So, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that, yeah, that goes to show that uh, there are some galleries, I guess, all over the globe that um have positioned themselves in such a way that you know they just want to show show themselves as galleries that only accept um um art from of artists who have a certain reputation you know or who yeah so so yeah but i think it's 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 quite interesting because um Art is a form of expression, like you said earlier, and it's also personal. I mean, for me personally, I whatever artwork I may have um, is not because 
um, I am looking at it uh, long term in terms of um, how it will convert for me financially. But it's more because I like it on my walls, you know, and it, and it could be for whatever reasons. Um, and I think that's that's the kind of collector I am. Um, so and I enjoy it. Uh, I may not understand a lot of it, but um, it, it's again perception. The way I look at it um, could be very different from the way someone else looks at the same um, art piece. So yeah, so so that's interesting. Um, how how are um, so tell tell uh, tell me and my listeners a little bit about the series, the books. Oh, I'd love to do that. Yeah. Before I do that, I want to just comment. I'm looking at your what's behind you and seeing, uh, I saw some of the artwork that I see behind you. And, you know, I think that um, what people collect says a lot about themselves. Um, there's a lot of validity in, in things that create an intangible language, meaning what is felt. Um, and I think we discount that a lot. The other thing I, I, I will just, uh, what you mentioned about expression really resonated with me because artists uh, contribute to the well being of others by sharing their personal visual vocabularies that could be perhaps only understood by the intangible. But how many things have we? Really, we really experience every single day that are based in tangible music, um, uh, food, uh, what other things that contribute to the well being of others, um, a, a sense of uh, uh, being in the here and now, something that inspires our imagination, thinking differently. Um, th those are all huge, huge things that. Uh, visual artists uh, or, or, or all of us experience in something that is intangible. And as you said about expression, the visual arts or all of the arts are about the freedom of expression. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we are an example of uh, what that means. And, um, you know, I'm always interested in how parents, uh, at least in this country, say that their children are geniuses when they can make this incredible drawing, right? But then somehow along the way, they don't want them to take on being an artist further because somehow it's not as serious as let's say another profession. And what I find is that, um, you know, well, at least for me, I find that an artist's life is the is a life and you can still be creative and do other things i just don't think that should be discounted so when i did these books so in 2011 and thank you for asking about them uh i was i was uh moderating a panel for the college art association conference which happens every year in different parts of the united states and um I was moderating a panel called How to Make a Living with or Without a Gallery. And in the audience, there was about 400 people standing room only. And I remember saying to the audience, wow, it's really great that you're here, but it's not so great that you're here because it shows this dependency on an old system. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, this, the, the, I wanna just preface by saying the market is one, just one aspect of artists sustaining a creative life. And um, I think it really serves maybe a little bit more than the 1% or just the 1% of artists globally. So what about the 99%? I mean, how do they sustain their lives? And what books are out there that start a conversation about who is really an artist today beyond the mythology? What is the truth that how people, uh, how artists are actually having uh, their lives both in the art world and then giving to other artists or starting things like museums like uh, and, and nonprofit organizations. And so the two books that I did, Living and Sustaining a Creative Life, uh, and then The Artist as Culture Producer, 
have each 40 artists each in those books, very short essays that start a conversation about the nitty gritty of how they sustain their lives. And the first book so is in its- So you interviewed them? I did not. They, it's all in, all, I interviewed only one person or, and then the, for the conclusion in my first book. And then my second book were zero interviews. So most of them are in their own voices, no advice. So it's it, as if someone is, the reader is tapping the artist from the back and then they turn around and share their story as if they met them in person. And um, it shows a wide range enough that artists who are reading from all over the world can really uh, take on maybe some of their paths and gain some validation and feel that they have empowerment with what they're doing and how they're living in the world. Um, my books are sold in 24 countries. Um, and then uh, uh, my first book is in its seventh printing and my second book is in its second printing. And they're still going. It's it's extraordinary how the so reach has them, been. Uh, so you have them um, translated as well into all these different languages. Well, actually, that's up to um, the, the publisher. It, no, it's up to a publisher in in that country in that, that country, wants to yeah. translate it. Yeah. So yeah. we have it translated in Korean. So. It is in uh, South Korea right now and in libraries and classrooms and museums. Um, we, uh, I don't recall if, I think we had an inquiry from China, um, but we are open to translating in all languages since they're sold in 24 countries. Yeah, which um, is why I thought it would make sense for, um, you know, for uh, them to be translated as well into different languages. I think it would yeah. then open up um, the, the number of people who, are, who have access to it and who are able to read it in case they don't, they don't know English. No, that's, that's really interesting because I, and, and encouraging for artists who are at that stage in their lives where, you know, they don't know how to take it forward. Um, in terms of um, them being artists and yeah and so a lot of people I, I, again it's probably something which uh, you know has been said for ever that artists are very sensitive people and um, I don't know um, is there some something in there or and why is it that um, artists are always referred to as very, very sensitive people? Well, I think artists um, share their vulnerability, which yields to a lot of strength. Um, the amazing thing about artists are that we can bounce back from failure very quickly because if we make something where most artists I know are not gonna stop making work if they, if they want to correct their things that they deem as mistake. Um, they're some of the hardest people, um, hardest working people. And also many artists don't realize, but we come from a place of abundance and not a deficit because yeah. we, have, we make things from nothing. Yeah. And those ideas come to fruition in independent vocabularies that each artist has. I think the reason why that we're perceived with sensitivity is because of that mythology, but also because we're revealing our vulnerability and also because we're not understood um, for many reasons. I think because of this exclusivity that uh, we are not as integrated in society and some certainly not in this country as much as I'd like to see it. Um, in other countries, we are much more integrated in society in many different ways. Yeah. Uh, a, a dream that I have is for artists to be in residence in all different sectors all over the world um, and to actually share resources because we have a tremendous amount of them. Um, tapping into, like I said, that creative thinking and practice into thinking into the intangible which I don't think a lot of people know how to do nor have the courage to do. Yeah, I so, think 
that's that's more it that they don't have the courage yeah 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 but you but you are clearly a creative person you know you are asking these intelligent insightful questions and sitting in a room with all of that artwork behind you i think that that people also don't have to be um a like a a dignified collector if you will or or someone who feels as though that that they will never understand art so they they are not creative or can't collect it well if people would just drop those ideas and just just even breathe what they see and if they like it it has validation for them yeah. no, um, absolutely and also aesthetics um, yes yeah that you know and and you're absolutely right i mean you did say i can't remember whether because we've we've talked about so many different things i can't remember whether you mentioned it before we started the, the the recording or during but you did say that it reflects um it looking at what you see around you reflects um the personality of that's correct the person so uh, yeah so uh, yeah i know i mean art is and and you're absolutely right um yes visual arts is of course your expertise um and that's what you're known for um and highly um what's the word um you're held in very high esteem <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's um, that's extremely kind of you. I just hope that I'm held in that high esteem through my friends and my family. You know, that's that's the people that I have to to make sure that I am. <laughs> but I I'm super grateful for that. Thank you very very kindly. No, absolutely. I mean, I I, I believe that, which is why I'm having this conversation with you in the first place. Thank um, you. Yeah, but art has many, many forms, you know, like I am a voice um, artist. Uh, That's correct. So that is an art form as well. And, right. uh, and being, a, a, being an, a podcaster is an extension of uh, right. that art form. So yeah, I mean, art comes in so many different, different ways, even if it could be performing arts or, or it could be puppetry or whatever, you know? So uh, yeah, I guess performing arts, puppetry would be a part of performing arts anyway. Oh, no question. There's an incredible, uh, I'm sure there are incredible programs for puppetry all over the world, but in the United States at University of Connecticut, there's an incredible puppetry uh, program there. And I think there's, that intersects uh, acting, performance, uh, theater and stage and the visual arts and music all together. And, and voice, yeah, and voice. Correct, well. and yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. So, I mean, there is a lot of different kinds of art and um, and you have to really, um, it's, it's interesting how different people look at it and perceive it um, and yeah, it's, it is, um, it's a different world altogether, such a different world to be um, in any form or, or to be uh, a part of any, any creative process um, is just, for me, I think it's, it's beautiful. Um, thank you so much, Sharon. I've really enjoyed um, talking to you and, and if I've asked you some ridiculous questions, please do oh, it. No, I, lo I loved them. I, I could talk to you for hours, but I feel like I bore, I would uh, bore you and your listeners. Not at all. Uh, I think it's just but, been, no, it's, it's, it's been very, uh, I mean, you've kind of, you know, it's, it's been very educative, uh, I'm sure for my listeners. Um, and also, I mean, if you have any with your experience, if, uh, you have any tips uh, for yeah. young artists? Um, because I have, uh, you know, the, the demographics of, of my listeners includes young creative people as well. So um, if there are any tips uh, uh, that you could share, I mean, I think it would be 
very valuable? Well, I would just say first, um, you can you can get these books through uh, Amazon or even livesustain.org or my website, SharonLoudon.com. And uh, I split all the royalties with all the artists, so it was never a money-making venture. A publishing it never is, but um, th those books are meant for artists of all ages, uh, but especially young artists who feeling that they may not have a footing as to what the real artist life is like and if they can identify with it. But the other thing I would say is in the, the wonderful words that you were expressing or, or sharing about how all the arts are so beautiful, as you said, um, I think that uh, the, all of the arts are within us and they're creative in different ways. Um, I think the culinary arts are oh, incredible and people, especially during this time of the pandemic, yeah. uh, ad ad adapting and adopting yeah. um, the, the wonderful arts or, or just even in the vision of uh, uh, organizing and designing and um, it comes in all different aspects. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think what an artist does is um, may lead the way in creativity and sharing through their visual vocabulary, contributing, like I said, to the well-being of others. Perhaps if it's just uh, pictures on a wall that that are there for wandering or comfort, or you know, aesthetics are political too. So maybe some messages that come through that people can learn from, share opinions, create conversation, discourse. Oh my gosh, there's just infinite amount of ways, but everyone can have their creativity. And I would just say for the young person, tap into and know what they love. And we have such a short life, um, d dive in. And, and the artist community is this open, welcoming community. Um, if anyone ever has a question, they can contact me through my website. Yeah. Um, I also have a mailing list where I share opportunities. We're about to send a, 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 a mailing in mid-February, so you can go on my newsletter um, or, or subscribe. And, you know, I would just say reach out and I, I hope, I, I try to, to write every single person who writes me back. It takes me some time, but. Yeah, but um, that's, that's incredible because I think, you know, you're, you're, you want to share your experiences, your knowledge, and you're open to do that, uh, which is, which is a fabulous quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I think it's just, uh, I think as human beings, we naturally, want to do that. And that's what you're doing here in this podcast. I'm just grateful. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you.